Uh, so if I may introduce Dr. Vittorio Venturi. He graduated from Edinburgh University in UK and received his PhD degree in microbiology from the University of Utrecht in the Netherlands. During his PhD and postdoctoral fellowship, he focused on the regulation of iron transported processes of beneficial plant associated bacteria. He then moved to the ICGBE in Trieste, Italy, where he started investigating intracellular signaling among bacteria. He then went to become a group leader at ICGEB, continuing his studies on intracellular signaling. He's published over 140 research articles in peer reviewed journals. His H index uh, is 43. His publications went uh, to prestigious journals, including Trends in Plant Science, Nature Genetics, ISME, a Molecular Plant Pathology, Trends in Microbiology, and MBio. He's interested in how plants associated bacteria undergo interspecies communication and interkingdom signaling within plants. His second interest is plant microbiome and the development of microbial products for a more sustainable agriculture. Since October 1st, 2019, he is the scientific coordinator of ICGEB. Please welcome Dr. Ventiro. So I also wish to thank very much the University of Jordan uh, for hosting us. We have a fantastic hospitality, uh, which makes us feel very much at home. And also thank very much also Dr. Belal, who has uh, put together this uh, workshop and done incredible dissemination. So there are so many of you here, which, you know, we've been talking to a few of you along the corridors before, before the workshop started. And, and many of you, you know, don't know about ICGB. So this is a really excellent and unique scenario that we can that you can become aware of who we are and what we do. So I was very happy to, to, to hear uh, the interaction uh, and the questions following Dr. Banks' uh, uh, presentation. So uh, we're now on a, on a roll about, so I want to continue this interactivity because with, with respect to, you know, my presentation will be very different from Dr. Banks. I will get down to the more details about how to apply and what we look for. So some things have already been covered by Dr. Banks, but maybe we can go through them again. So my presentation will be a little bit more boring, maybe more nitty gritty, trying to really give you the, the, the details and some advice how you go about applying to our programs. So I'll be starting the first, the first talk that I'll give, I'll be starting about applying for PhD fellowship, postdoc fellowships, short term fellowships. So this will be more dedicated to, to younger people and I'm very happy to see there are many of you here uh, nevertheless, also PIs will be very interested because we'll be very happy that you recommend motivated uh, young students uh, to our programs. Because, you know, we PIs, we know uh, when we have a very motivated young, uh, young scientist. And for that reason, and not, you know, I'm, when I see a motivated young scientist, I do anything I can to make sure he or she, uh, you know, uh, nurtures this motivation and has the ability then to, to, to work in a lab that will allow him or her to, to excel, right? So UPIs have also have, an, have a very important role in this. Please motivate your young people and maybe even help them apply to us, okay? If you, if you, if you have the, so you also play a very important role. And then uh, lastly, I will also be talking how to apply to our meeting and courses, which is also, I find it an excellent you know, here we move maybe fewer people. Here we can move a lot of people. You know, our meeting and courses moves thousands of people every year. You know, just to give you an example, I organized uh, a workshop in Trieste on, uh, on plant microbiomes, and somebody from Sri Lanka attended. And in these workshops and meetings, we, it, it is absolutely crucial that the organizers invite the top leaders in the field. So the young, the participants get exposed and meet the, the leaders in the field. So when I organized this, uh, this, this plant microbiome course, you know, 16 leaders of the field came. In fact, they even came at their own cost because I talked to them about ICGB and some of the PIs really would like to come in and give a lecture and pay their own travel. Then, of course, we host them uh, when, they come to, when they came to Trieste, I hosted them. And somebody from Sri Lanka then started talking to one of these PIs and now uh, this student from Sri Lanka is spending time in Scotland in one of the PIs' labs. So you can see the power of these 
of these workshops. This is what we would like to see. So, and so here, we're moving a lot of people, and a lot of people get, get to meet the top leaders in the field. So uh, I hope I will not be too boring, but again, uh, as, as Lawrence said, you can interrupt me anytime. If something's not clear, or if I went too fast, or if, okay, if, or if I went too fast, or, or if you just want to, or, or if I just missed some information. So the PhD fellowships, we have one call a year, and that is, that is uh, March, April. Uh, the reason I say March, April is I'll, I'll come to it. So as Lawrence already mentioned, if you want to apply for a PhD uh, fellowship, so to do your PhD in one of the ICGBs, the first thing you have to do is to contact an ICGBI group leader because the application is actually a joint effort. It's a package between the student and, and the PI. So the student and the PI have to convince the ICGB selection committee that they have a good package, that they have a good project, that the PI is doing well because, you know, we PIs are also under assessment that we're doing well, the project is good, and the student is motivated and it shows the motivation. So don't, don't think that it's just a student, it's a package with the, with the PI. So as Lauren said, you have to contact the PI. And again, it is fundamental that when you contact the PI, you, you demonstrate immediately that you're a motivated student, that you really want to do a PhD. You know, I, I'm, uh, just to give you an example, I, I, in the last call I, I, I did a Skype interview with, uh, you know, Skype, not interview, Skype, just a Skype chat because I want to get to know the applicants. And when one of the students, I, 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 we Skyped, and, and the first question I asked her was, oh, why are you interested, are, have you read about my work? Are you interested in my, my research? And she answered me, no, no, I haven't. You know, I'll, I'll, when I'll get there and I start working with you, then I'll understand if, if I like it. You know, I, I, was, I was taken aback this, this, by this kind of answer. It just, maybe it's telling me that, PhD is becoming more like a, a first, like a degree, whereas a PhD must be a moment in your life that you've decided to, to embark on a research career because that is basically saying, I want to become a scientist. So you have to, dem you know, we, we're looking for students who are motivated and when they contact the group leader, they demonstrate that they have read and know about what the group leader is doing and they are really interested in that particular research field. And you have to show that in your, in your first contact. And as Lauren says, you know, we get hundreds of, me, of email. I get, dear sir, madam, already the student does not bother seeing if I'm a male or a female. Does not even put my name in, in the first. And then here is my, and then a line here, I want to apply for a PhD fellowship, please find attached my CV. You know, which I will just delete that, that email. I mean, I'm, I tell you straight away. So you, you need to make a contact and you need to understand where, where which, what kind of area you want to do, identify if there is, because you know, we do cover a lot of research topics, but we don't cover them all. And if there isn't, well, you know, there's other labs you can apply as well. I mean, there's other institutions, but so if you, if you identify that what you really want to do is an ICGB, contact the PI showing that, and then initiate a conversation. And then if there is chemistry between you and the PI, then, uh, then you start putting together the, the, the application form. So that's the first and most important, you know, that is the first and most important contact. If that doesn't take place, you will not be able to apply. Because, you know, we PIs, we get a lot of, a lot of applicants. And as Lauren said, it is a competitive application. You know, we don't have lots of fellowships. In terms of eligibility, uh, applicants must be nationals or CGB member states. So, so if you are a student in Jordan and you're not a national of Jordan, and your nationality is not an SCGB member country, I am sorry, you cannot apply. But if you're, if you're in Jordan and, and, and you're a national of another ICGB member country, that's fine. Okay? You need to have a university degree. I mean, we, you know, obviously there are, we have, you know, in Europe we have the three plus two. Uh, in the European Union we have the three plus two setup. So we have a bachelor and then a master's. So usually we will, we will uh, usually in, in most cases we need a master's. Uh, probably here you will need your university degree. Uh, you will need your university degree from Jordan. And we also would like to see that you have English proficiency because obviously the PhD work 
It's all in English. The communication with UPI is in English. The writing is in English. The papers are in English. So you need, we don't want a perfect English because you will, your English will improve dramatically when you will be four years in ICGB. Uh, all you have colleagues, you have friends, you will have friends from all over the world. But we, need, we do need a standard to begin with that will allow you to start working immediately. We don't want a scenario that you come and we need to send you to do English classes. Okay, so uh, I'm sure there are, you know, these TOEFLs or these, these uh, other uh, examinations that you, you know, levels of English that you can, uh, these exams that you can prove that you have a, a certain level of English. <clears throat> okay. What do we do? What do we support in these, in these, uh, uh, these fellowships? Uh, these fellowships, basically, you will be completely autonomous. We don't expect you to, to use any of your money, your money or your parents' money. You will be an independent person. That's very important for us. Uh, we don't look at, uh, at any, any, any financial issue. You, you will be completely independent. We will get you, we will get you from here to, uh, to an ICGB and back home at the end of it, okay? We will uh, provide you, we, <clears throat> the duration will be three years with the possibility of one year. I know, I know that you know, in Italy and in, in Europe in general, there's now a strong tendency to, 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 to do the PhD in three years. Uh, I mean, this is subjective. I personally feel that it's a very short time. You know, uh, I do tell my students when they come to the lab, I have, I'm older than you, I know that time flies, and I know that you have very little time. So you have to work very hard, and, and, you, have to have a, and, and, and you have to work very hard because time flies. But I do think three years is a short time. In most cases, it's an ICGB. The duration is between three to four years. It can be, you know, last year I had somebody graduate three years and four months. This year I will have somebody graduate three years and eight months. So there you go. So between three, four years. So three years are guaranteed. Uh, the last year, it depending, depending on funds, availability on funds, sometimes the PI, you know, something that we PIs do all the time, we have external grants, we always apply for funding, extra funding apart from ICGB funding, so in order to support our research. So it's of, very often the case that the PI will then fund the fourth year or at least help funding the fourth year. Uh, I, I must say that our, we have a piece, as, as Lauren said, we do not grant uh, we cannot grant uh, the diplomas. We have agreements with several universities, but we do have a PhD course, which comprises of you know 40 seminars a year. So we have we we spend a lot of money getting the best scientists coming to ICGB to give one-hour seminars, usually at lunchtime on a at lunchtime on a Friday or other days, and students must go, and they must go, they must attend, and they have a form that they will fill in during this the, the, the seminar, uh, you know, giving a feedback to how they thought the seminar was, about the, you know, whether it was, it was the introduction clear, were the results exhaustive, uh, was the discussion understandable, was the hypothesis good, anything you wish to improve. So they have to also not only attend the seminar, but think about it and write something about it and then sign it. So we can also not only make sure that they attend, but also we would like to, them to think about it. So that's the way, it's a very important part of their training and they do that for three years. So they'll be attending over 100 seminars in, complete, in the fields completely different from their, the field in which they're doing their research, which is important to open their mind. We, we, we then, they then have to do, attend journal clubs, 12 a year, uh, 10 a year at least, some attend more. So each PI, for example, in ICGB in Trieste, we will organize a journal club. So we will send a, a paper to all the students. And during the journal club, we will discuss the paper. And, and we PIs, we will ask questions to the students. What did you think about the paper? Were the controls well done? How would you improve it? Did you understand this result? So be critical towards the, the paper. And then we also oblige them to attend some international courses, at least one ICGB course a year. And also, uh, we, we, we send them to, usually it happens towards the end of their PhD, we send them to international conferences to present the work, either orally or via posta. So we have, uh, we have a very strict program, and we follow, the, we follow them well, even though we're not a, a granting institution. Okay? 
So it's not only about coming to our labs and doing research. So you will get, uh, for th you will get a monthly, st and, and there are checkpoints. We have checkpoints through the three years, how, how the student is doing. We have a checkpoint at the first year where the student will, will sit in an office with, two, with his supervisor and two other PIs and discuss his or her project. And then the PI together with the external PIs will then discuss how the student is doing, how the program, not only the student, you will also look at whether the project is a good project, because also we PIs are under examination. And then they will, they will recommend continuation or, or they will recommend maybe changing something or be careful of this or maybe, you know, start doing something, maybe start a parallel project, which, uh, because this current project has too much risk. So they will be assessed at the first year and also at the end of the second year. In extreme scenarios, which happens extremely rarely, we can also recommend at the end of the second year that the student will get a master's and not continue to PhD. But this, in my time, I've only seen it once, if that, okay? So we take good care of you. We make sure you you're have a good project. We make sure you're motivated. We make sure you work hard. Okay, so the monthly stipends are here. Of course, they differ from, uh, from component to component because there are different uh, economic setups. We provide a, a private medical insurance for the duration of the fellowship, so you don't have to worry about that. No tuition fees will pay for them. You know, we have, as we have agreements with the universities, the universities demand that we pay a, a fee, and we'll pay for that. And we pay all the, we make sure you guys get visas, and all that is covered. We not only pay for that, we have assistance we have people that will help you get the visa, will help you with the documentation. We have people that will help you once you get to Italy, India, or in Cape Town. You know, you need to be registered with the police, you need to get your permit of stay, we'll, 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 we'll take care of that. You're very well looked after. You just have to focus on your project, okay? So the selection procedure. So. The applications that will, be, that will be sent to ICGB, they all have to be endorsed by the liaison officer, by Dr. Bellal. You know, we, <clears throat> so it's to make sure that, that, that you know, maybe that, that's linked very much. It doesn't happen with PhD fellowships, really. It doesn't happen a lot that we cannot, you know, apply so, you know, only so many. We can only take so many per country. So that it just need to be endorsed by, by so also because Dr. Bellal knows, he wants to be aware of the numbers of the people who apply. So it's good that the contact point in your country knows that you're applying. And then we have a selection committee of, composed of five PIs that will evaluate the applications. And unfortunately, we have more applicants, more suitable. Very often we have more suitable applicants that we can fund. So they will, uh, uh, they will select very carefully on, on, on scientific excellence of the project, you know, qualities of the kind of CV, PI, benefit to the home country is, is not mandatory, but that might come into play as well. If you're doing something, if you do some of the research you're doing, it's potentially very interesting for your country. Okay. So the, you know, like, uh, again, the application has to be competitive, it has to be very well ma made, okay? Closing date for application is, is the 31st of March for your, for your uh, local focal point for the endorsement of Jordan, and then they will come to, and then, we will, uh, and then they will be sent to, to Trieste, to the headquarters. The fellowships office, as Lauren said, the headquarters of ICGB are in Trieste, and the fellowships office is in Trieste. Okay? And everything is submitted online. So, um, very, very, the CV, the motivation letter written by the student. So the student has to write why he or she would like to do a PhD, and in that particular field as well. So why doing a PhD? which is a very important career choice of your life, and why in particular in that area of research? Why are you so interested in that area? 
this, the proposed research project. This is something that has been done together with the OPI, and, and we, we, we put that as a requirement because that is, an, an, is, an, is the occasion that the student and the PI will meet and discuss and get to know each other. So that you will get to know the PI and find out about his or her research, and the PI will get to know you. So that is, is really a perfect occasion that you two meet and get to know each other. So we want to see that, that there is chemistry between you two and, there is, uh, and the student has thought about the project and the PI has met the student and has also given feedback to the project to the student. An English, English language certificate. Then you need to provide, you have to provide three contacts for three referees, but these will be in your application form and then you have to inform the referees. But then the referees will independently send the reference letter to the fellowship office. So the reference letters will not be submitted by, by the student, just the referees. And that you have contacted the referees to let them know they have to send the letter to the fellowship's office. And then they will, each of the three referees will send the letter and then the fellowship's of, office will recognize the, the reference letter and put it together with your application. Is that clear? Yeah? Ask me if something's not. We, we would like to see the diploma certificate. In your case, uh, these are basically your university degree with your grades of your exams and also your passport for the copy. All these, all these documents you will see, very simple, just you're going to have PDFs and, bingo, and, and just upload them and then send away the, the application. Okay. Any questions on the PhD fellowships? Yeah, yeah, I mean, the quality of the CV, I mean, sure, we don't, um, my recommendation is, you know, you are, uh, you just graduated from university, obviously your CV, uh, you know, it's not, uh, it's at the beginning, it's the beginning of your career, yeah. so keep it simple, you know, even one page, three quarters of a page, you know. Now, if I have, if I don't have certain expertise in the field that I want to have a PhD certificates and is that necessary Do no I problem no that's that's we don't expect that um it, it could be that you've done your masters and then you want to you've developed an interest in your master's project to continue with that but if you in your motivation letter you clearly say well i've done my masters in this but I, during my masters i've also become aware of this other field of research which really i would like to which really interests me that that is fine can we apply to If I understand correctly, can you apply without master's degree? I'm, um, I'm not sure what is the what is the, your the graduate um, the, the degree system in, in Jordan. Um, I have to we have to look at that. We, we we really would like to see at least four years of undergraduate study. Uh, well, so we have what what is the the degree system in, in Jordan? What, what? Bachelor. How long is the bachelor? And the masters? Usually, usually, in most cases, we, we, we would look at the masters. At the masters. I was in Colombia, and uh, they had the same question. Uh, I was in Colombia last month, and they had the same questions, and all the applicants we had from Colombia had their masters. So I would recommend that you, because I, I guess in the masters, you're going to do a, pro, a, thesis, uh, a research project. Yes. And I think that is very important for you to understand whether you like to do research. We, 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 would have to, we would have to look at that, but I would strongly encourage that you also have the masters. Now, uh, you said that a part of the fellowship, the university fees is covered. Does that university necessarily has to be in Jordan or it, it can be in a member country? No, no. Uh, again, I, I, have to, I have to say what Lauren says. Let's not make... There are two, two separate things. One is the, the PhD joint program that we're going to discuss tomorrow and it's still open for discussion that we're going to talk about with Jordan. This is the PhD program of ICGB 
and we have a fixed agreements with the universities in Italy, in the UK, in India, in, and in South Africa. And so if you apply for one of these PhD fellowships, which is already established in ICGB, you will be registered with one of these universities, depending where you're going to do your PhD, and the fees will be covered. So, for example, if you come to Italy, you have at the moment two choices. Well, you have two choices, which usually UPI will, will, will help you decide. And it will be either the Open University in the UK or, a local, or the University of Trieste or a local university. Uh, and no fees will be. Will be, will be. Okay. Then we're open to, to other kinds of agreements. But um, this is the PhD program of, that we have with our own fellowships, OK? OK. So. Somebody else? Somebody call me? Thank you for your presentation. I have a question about the acceptance letter from the host, then followed by proposed research project. If I to have acceptance, so they should know what I'm going to work with, so maybe my project would be developed by Collaboration so, with them, with the ICG EP labs, right? No, no, no sorry, I, I, I actually did not mention this. This is um, this uh, the ICGB selection committee just wants to make sure that one of the documents is that the PI writes yes, yes, I have I approve this project, and in case it is awarded, I will host the PC in my lab. This is just a, it's just that we need to have that guarantee from the PI that, that he, he agrees with this application and that in case of success, he or she will host in, in the lab. So this, this has got nothing to do with the host lab here in, in, in there, there's, there's no labs involvement in Georgia. Okay, so I'll maybe move a little faster. We, the CRP, the, the, the research grants will be after, after, we, after the break. So I'll just go, go, go on with the, post, with the, with the postdocs, which is, which is uh, very, very similar to the PhDs. Um, so again, applicants should, should contact the PI again, but in this case, uh, you know, the postdocs already have much more experience. They already have done a PhD, so they already know, they have a good idea what they want to do. So usually the contact takes place and there are less problems with the, with the contact because the, the, the postdoc is much, has much more experience. And again, applicants sh should contact the group leader, making sure that they have space, making sure that, uh, that, that they need to provide a motivation letter, and again, a research proposal that they have to write together with the PI, driven very much by the postdoc applicant. Uh, again, the eligibility, applicants must be national of ICGB member states. They should hold a recent PhD degree. I mean, again, we have, you know, English proficiency certificate must be provided, but in most cases this is not necessary because if the PhD has been done in English and written in English, that is in itself a certificate. And, you know, we would like to, to we, we, you know, preference is given under the age of 35. We would like to put some restriction to the age. I mean, it's not mandatory, but we would like to put some restriction. The financial support, again, we take care of everything to and from ICGB. You will be traveling at the beginning of your fellowship, and then you'll be, you'll be, getting, you'll be able to you'll get support for travel getting back. This is different. We have a, a two, usually it's a two-year duration with exceptionally a possibility of a third year in case the student is exceptional and there are results which are, which are cooking, which are very good. So ICGB will consider a third year, okay? But usually it lasts for two years. The stipend is higher than the PhD, uh, but again, varies according to the location. Medical health insurance is provided, and again, we'll take cover. We'll cover all the, the visa costs, and then we'll take care of you when, with all the, the paperwork once you come and live in the country that, you're, that is hosting you. Okay, again, uh, the application must be endorsed by the local contact point, and again, there's a selection by a selection committee five people in ICGB, which will take into consideration the whole package. Project, the candidate, PI, okay, uh, and, uh, and again, potential benefit to the country. We, as Lauren said, we always, as ICGB, we always, we're always happy and we're always aiming that PhDs and postdocs will then return to their home country to, to bring back and develop science in your home country, okay? 
Uh, unlike unlike the, the PhD program, we have two calls a year for postdocs. So we have uh, end of March and end of September. So we mix it, mix it more flexible. And again, all the application form is, uh, is online. And you have to upload exactly the same thing, CV, motivation letter. The PI has to, make has to just formally accept you in case you're granted a fellowship. The research project, which, has been, which is proposed by the student and which has been seen by the PI. Uh, English language certificate. This is, uh, is usually not the case. But, um, and again, the three referees have to be written in the, in the, in the, the contacts have to be written in your, in your application form. And then you have to make sure that they send the letter to, to the fellowship office, the PhD certificate, and the passport. OK, so short-term fellowships, um, again, Lawrence mentioned these. These, these are, are um, again, you know, we, we, don't, we don't give preference to PhD to, at, at which level of your career you are. So we have short-term PhD fellowships, short-term postdoc fellowships, and then we have the SMART fellowship. So, so the short-term PhD fellowship is you're doing a PhD somewhere somewhere in an ICGB member country and you want to spend some time, you know, I will give you the time now, in, in, uh, in, ICG, in one of the three ICGBs as part of your PhD. Same as a postdoc. You're doing a postdoc somewhere and you want to spend uh, some of your time of your postdoc in one of the ICGB components. The SMART is what Lawrence already discussed. The SMART are short-term fellowships that you want to spend Time you are from one ICGB member country and you want to spend uh, from a laboratory in an ICGB member country and you want to spend some time in another ICGB uh, member country lab. Okay, so moving, moving, uh, moving, uh, the sh moving scientists from from uh, labs of member countries, but not to ICGB components. Okay. The same application procedure uh, as a, um, the short-term PhD fellowships first is the same application procedure as a PhD application with the following differences. The duration is shorter, obviously, it's one to 12 months. Um, my, my advice, one month is, is ridiculous. I mean, it, there, are, there could be scenarios for a very specific reason, but in, in this case, you know, you, you don't, we don't want to see uh, we, want, we don't want to see, oh, I want to spend some time there because I want to just find out what they're doing or just want to visit the lab and learn, you know. No, it has to be a very focused project. There must be a clear reason why you want to go to that lab, right? And usually everything is organized before you go, so when you go, you're very that time is spent very efficiently, okay? So, you know, you want to, you want to, you want to, you want to make it very clearly what your experiment you want to do. You want to, you want to learn a technique in a ICGB facility, which is, which is fundamental for your PhD project. And that facility you don't have back home, for example. So we're looking for a very clear reason why you want to spend that time in, in, in the lab. Okay. And in that case, no endorsement is necessary. So you can just go ahead and submit your application without, without the endorsement from your local focal point. Postdoc fellowship is the same as the postdoc application. Again, it's a shorter duration, and again, we want to see a clear reason why you want to go to an ICGB lab. No endorsement necessary. And the smart fellowships, as this slide already Lawrence has shown you, is you want to, when you want to spend some time for a short amount of time for a specific reason in one of the labs of an ICGB member country. Again, application is not online, so. The, the, the application of the SMART is not online, the other two are online. So the, the, the SMART, you have to download the application form, paper, uh, you have to fill it up and then you have to submit it by PDF and submit it to, to the fellowship's office. Okay, the closing date are two, 30, end of March and end of September. And, and again, uh, the PhD and postdoc short-term fellowships, again, you know, CV, motivation letter, acceptance from host lab, research project, certificate, three referees, it's the same. Okay? It's, it's, it's like applying for, it's very similar to PhD and postdoc with very, the few differences that I've mentioned. And the SMART are sent via email. They're not, they are not uh, done online. Okay?
take a picture? Okay. So, yes. For those people that go on the short-term fellowships, so are you actually providing him also with a budget for the consumables that he'll be using while in the lab, or he's just getting the opportunity to be in that lab? How is he going to get covered? The, the, the PI will cover the cost of the consumables. The PI in the PI will agree will agree to accepting accepting the, the short-term fellow, and he will agree to make sure that the short-term fellow can do the experiments and will cover the cost of the consumables. Same with PhD so, students. Same, right? same with PhD students. With the smart, I don't think we have, we don't have any. This the host lab that is accepting the fellow. They have to uh, they have to make sure that they. So is that, is that maybe nobody, maybe not everybody heard. So, so the, the short-term fellowships that are going to ICGB components, the PI will cover the consumable cost. The smart fellowships, there is a small contribution for the consumable for the hosting lab. Yeah, what is no endorsement is necessary? So, so the, the other, all the, other, the, the, the endorsement is that your local, Point. So we at CGB, we have a person uh, that an institute, a person within an institute that will be our focal point with which we communicate and knows all our activities. And for for the for the applications of PhD and postdoc, he must endorse the application. He must sign it and says, "Okay, I agree. You apply and and I endorse your application." And with the sh with the with the with the short-term fellowships, that is not necessary. You can apply directly. Yeah. Uh, Yemen is not included in the member state, so as a Yemeni student studying here at the University of Jordan, they cannot apply? I'm afraid not. Does that, uh, can maybe have a microphone? If, if, if somebody applies who is not from an ICGB member country, they can't receive ICGB formal support. However, it still doesn't stop you from a contacting a PI because the PI does have other forms of funding. They have external grants which they can support a student on. Okay? And so I, for instance, I have a student who's just finishing his PhD student with me who's from Nepal. And I've been funding him on my, one of my external grants. It happens to be that he's an extremely, extremely good candidate. He was a good, very strong candidate, had a very, very strong CV. So what I'm saying is that somebody from, who's not from an ICDB member country can apply to the programs, but they have to ensure that the PI is willing to support them from a, a, a different source of funding. Or, alternatively, the student can find another agency that might be able to fund their fellowship. Thank you. So we're very... We're, the, the advice is then write to the PI demonstrating your interest and hope maybe the PI has, will say to you, oh, you cannot apply to, we cannot apply to the fellowship of the ICGB, the ICGB fellowship, the grants, you know, but I, I will cover your, the fellowship with, my ex, with an external grant of a grant that I have. So, so basically, you're encouraged to contact the PI in any case. Okay? Unfortunately, you will not be able to apply to, to the core program that we have uh, in ICGB, that is only for our member countries. You know, all, all PIs, you know, all of us have, have grants from, you know, European community or foundations or other granting agencies. And, and when we get those grants, we are free to, 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 to hire who, who we want with that. And we can then support students with external money. Okay, so I will, uh, I will move on. I will finish, uh, Bilal, in 10 minutes. Um, Bella asked me about visiting faculty. Um, we, you know, we, for example, in my lab, I hosted a, a sabbatical professor for one year. Uh, we welcome this. 
we have no formal support for this, so uh, it will be very much depend on your the setup that your university uh, has. Then you can contact the PI, and the P and you can start having a conversation with the PI about you about a senior faculty spending some time at ICGB, and then that can be negotiated. But I can tell you, there is no formal support for this, so you will not get a stipend. You will not get support of travel, so it will be a much more. Uh, it will be much. It will be much related to the, to what you can, how you can organize that stay. And then, if you can organize stay, my advice is you contact the PI, the PI's lab that you want to spend your sabbatical, and then see how it goes from there. But we have no program for visiting scientists. And and the grant, uh, the grant awarded by the ICGEB, can it be used for such reason? Um, uh, it could, yes, it could. Personally, I mean, it could. Uh, we we would you know encourage more that that money is used for moving the the actual for moving younger students who will do the lab work, but it cannot be we cannot exclude that a senior PI can then go and spend some time in another collaborative lab. You know, the, part of the collaboration laboratories of the CRP that the senior PI would also go. That that is, that is also possible. But we have no formal. Uh, program for for uh, sabbatical uh, visits, uh, but we're open. To, but we're very open to them. Is that right, Lawrence? Yeah. So just to you know, just just to give an example. So with the technology transfer uh, arm of what we have, that often involves quite senior people coming because of the um, you know because of learning the technologies related to development of biosimilars. Somebody who wants to come as a sabbatical within that sort of context to learn technology transfer that can be quite senior people but as Vittorio says we don't actually have a, a formal program but you know we, we're always open to to discussions about how we can facilitate more senior people coming to spend a few months in ICGB labs we do it on a fairly regular basis but it's always ad hoc it's, ad it's, ad hoc. it's, it's always uh, a case-by-case -case basis C contact us and we'll we'll talk about it for sure Okay, so I will finish in uh, five, ten minutes and uh, talking about the, the meetings and courses. And again, um, we, we, we support, you know, over 20, 25 meetings and courses every year. And, uh, you know, and uh, the eligibility. So as a, here we're looking at a, at a senior PI they, or you know, a PI it doesn't have to be senior. A PI that wants to organize a course, a workshop, a conference. You know, in Jordan, uh, bringing here uh, in a topic, bringing here the top of the field. You know, and, and we're very happy. We're we're very we're very happy to support these these programs and the eligibility app. So you have to be located in an ICGB member, an ICGB member country, which is fine. I mean, you can be American. But work in Jordan, that's fine. So, okay, so you don't have to be a national of an ICGB member, ICGB member country. You, you need to organize it here. Uh, the organizer accepts the terms of reference. Again, you need endorsement by the focal point. And, uh, you know, we, we like to give particular attention to events addressing issues of interest to a specific geographical region. So many of our courses now are, are, are macro-region courses. We realize it's very expensive to travel because our grants that we give to the organizer usually don't cover travel of the participants. Uh, they can cover travel of the speaker, of the, of the lecturer or speaker, but not of the students. So we realize that it is expensive to travel. So we're looking at, 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 at events that will cover a, like a macro area here, like as, as Lawrence showed you, the macro area of the Middle East, that would be fantastic, that you, that you would encourage a, a workshop that will bring, uh, that will bring participants from, from, from the region. Okay? Uh, there are several different, different categories of, of, of events that we, that we support. We, su we can support an ICGB meeting, okay? which is organized, usually this is organized in, a, in one of the components. This is a, a big meeting of, you know, involving two, two, over 200, two to 300 participants and ICGB scientists are co-organizers. You can also be involved in organizing, co-organizing this together with some ICGB scientists. But ICGB scientists have to be there and this is, usually, this is organized in one of the ICGB components. Okay? 
and this will be organized by, the, by our, our, our conference unit. We have a conference, very efficient conference uh, unit in, uh, in the headquarters in Trieste, and they will organize this meeting which is great because you can focus much more. They will provide all the support about local transport, about the venue, about getting the food sorted out, getting the computer unit. So you can really, the organizers can really focus on the science and the program. We have, we have a very good setup. We've been organizing this for 30 years, organizing these kinds of events for 30 years. And you can, you know, we, you can get quite a good lump of money for that. A workshop. This is uh, organized here, can be organized here, and usually we're looking for some co-sponsorship. So the money of ICGB usually is not enough to cover all the cost of, of the, these participants are fewer, and you're looking at, uh, again, on a focused topic, uh, you know, on a focused topic, and we're looking at, 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 at uh, you know, you're inviting leaders in the field and maybe providing also some oral and posted presentations for participants. Okay, and this contribution is, is less, can be up to 25,000. Organize a course. This is when you want to really teach something. Can be theoretical and practical, so this is more didactic. Okay. So, you know, I, I, would just, I just went to an ICGB course in Colombia and I gave two lectures. They were more, I'm not, not undergraduate, but I... I was much more didactic in the way I presented my, my, my work. Usually they're, they're small because if they have a practical component, then you cannot host too many people. Uh, and again, the local institute will provide all the facilities, equipment, and staff. And again, the maximum contribution is 15,000. For, for, for both of these scenarios, the money will be sent here and it has to be handled here. Of course, then you have to provide reports and you have to provide all the, all the budgetary uh, justifications for your, for your, for your event. And then uh, we have two smaller things, you know, like if you want to do something just, you know, I see some one or two days events, inviting a, a few speakers. Maybe you, 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 wanna, you would like to bring here to Jordan, oh, there's a, a new topic in the, in, that has come out maybe here in the world, and I would like to, 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 to bring this topic to Jordanian scientists, so I will ask money to invite the top people and, and, and make, this, make this topic aware to our community. Or we will also, you, or maybe you have a very big meeting here. Maybe you have your national, you know, your genetics uh, society or big society that, that do their annual event, and you would like to have some sponsorship of a big annual event, maybe of 5,000 euros, where you can invite some participants from SGB member countries to attend. And usually, with this, we would like that you also invite, that use this money also to to invite one of the ICGB scientists, one of the three components that can come in and, 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 and be part of your, of your national event. So usually this is a national event. I've just been to one also where we co-sponsor. Okay. Um, Lawrence and I were also discussing for next year. We're also considering the possibility of opening up a new, uh, a new funding, uh, a funding of a new, of a new, uh, uh, of a new event, Some, if we were looking at funding maybe um, a meeting between a consortium of, of PIs uh, that even from different countries that are looking to apply to a, to a, to an inter to a big grant, to an international grant. And you know, we, we, when, we, when we apply also in Europe to a, to a European Union grant, we need, you know, sometimes it involves six or seven labs and we need to meet to discuss how we're going to apply, who's going to do what, uh, you know, discuss the, the application procedure and, and the project. And, and uh, usually we get together and we use our own funds and we realize this is maybe difficult for, for you to, to do. So if uh, we're, 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 we're hopefully we, we, will in, we will introduce a new, a new uh, type of uh, grant that, we will, that will be part of the meeting and workshop umbrella where we will fund a, a consortium of PIs, a consortium PI that will apply to an international grant, and then we will fund that. We will fund a meeting that you can meet to discuss the grant, and then as, pro as a proof of, of, of that, you will then also provide evidence that you've applied for the grant. So that is, uh, that is under the, uh, you know, we're thinking about that. That is work in progress, and 
keep an eye keep an eye for that kind of activity in in, uh, in our website and if we do agree on that you will see it in our, in our website in the very near future okay so if you're thinking that you want to apply to some international grant and you want to meet with the other PIs and you don't have the money look in our website maybe we'll or write to us we'll let you know if if we were able to to get that going okay so finally the application of all these events are is online it's very easy but again uh, as Lauren says you can contact us but but there is an email for the workshop and courses that you will find in the web you can contact the people will reply to you immediately uh, and if you have any questions just contact us and we'll, we'll get back to you but in the, but uh, in, the, in in principle it's very it's very simple and it's all online you know the forms are online the deadline is the end of February one call a year one call a year and you have to provide this is part of the information that is part of the online application process organizing institute scientific organizer venue invited speakers local staff subject areas lecture participants budget and other sponsors I mean we do appreciate that some of these things might then change once you organize your event because maybe some of the speakers that you know you write down five or six spe speakers that you you're gonna contact and invite but then maybe some of the speakers cannot come because you know their their agenda does not allow it so we do realize that in some cases things might change uh, you know the final event might be different from 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 this application but we do want to see where, where you're going at and, wh and where, what your plans are okay and and it will be helpful if you can already demonstrate that you have other sources for many of our most of the other uh, of the type of meeting or course or workshop you can apply we do you know it, it does help if you can demonstrate that you already have some other source of funding uh, excuse me excuse me can we go uh, here can we go back to the slide before yeah, uh, a limited financial contribution towards a scientific meeting. What type of scientific meetings are we talking about? The first one. L the last. Uh, sl this the one. Last, the last line. This a one. Ah, yes. Yeah, this what? one. This one. This one. Usually, we, we would like you know you would you might have a, a big meeting in, in here in Jordan okay. of your national uh, our national society or a big meeting yeah. that 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 you Jordanians organize or maybe on a once every two years or three years and you would like to have some extra some some you know up to 5,000 euros some extra money mm -hmm. and with extra, extra money you will you know uh, ICHB can provide you the extra money and what we're looking at is that you we use that money to to maybe invite younger participants from from okay. ICHB member countries nearby and also involve one of the PIs of one of the three components that is that fits very well the meeting that you're organizing so he could come so any, any, any scientific meeting that towards the what, what any scientific meeting you're yeah. organizing here in Jordan to get some extra support but again we do look we do then we are looking that you invite one of the ICGB scientists that fits that meeting so he or she can come and present the work and also present ICGB to, to, to your audience okay so and this is the this is also uh, Lawrence already showed you this is also uh, just a snapshot of the events we've we've uh, we sponsored in 2019 as you can see we are we are sponsoring uh, or funding or sponsoring events all over the world and we hope that in the near future we can we can sponsor an event here in Jordan uh, uh, and, and it's up to you to to really apply um, um. I have a question regarding the PhD student application. Uh, I come from the private sector sure. and we have, we're in the diagnostic services with 200 people. We have a lot of uh, employees with the master's degree willing to do their PhD. Now, is it possible to do the research in Jordan after the registration in one of the universities, partly here for, for example, uh, a particular disease or a mutation uh, a field study uh, and then uh, uh, continue that research in one of the student in one of the universities uh, as they will need to collect all the medical samples from Jordan uh, present their thesis in the relevant university while we can pro uh, provide the logistics the funding for that service because uh, naturally if it's a genetic it's gonna require a quite uh, uh, 
a significant fund, not only consumables. So they do the research here, and in in, we can co-supervise them. Then, in maybe uh, at the end of the second year, uh, continue some part of that research in, uh, uh, in whatever university. Uh, I, then I mean, get there. We need we need degree. to look at that. I mean, I cannot give you a straight answer, yes or no. We need to look at that. But from what I hear, it sounds more like you fit better on the other thing. The, the, what we will discuss tomorrow with respect to a joint PhD program between Jordan and the ICGB, which is not this program here with our core program. So from what I hear from you, I think it fits better a possible joint program between Jordan and ICGB, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll need to talk to you about it, and we need to carefully carefully understand what you what you are meaning, and then we will can, can give you a, a clear answer. But at the moment, I don't think they fit our core program, because our core programs, the student will do most of the work in the ICGB components. I mean, I have now an, a, a student that was spending six weeks in Africa, but that's okay. To spend part of the time of your PhD as a collaboration, that will be fine, but not the kind of time that you're saying, okay? It will be a small part of the time. But from what you're saying, it sounds to me that we can talk about this, the other program we wish to implement between Jordan and ICGB. Thank you. So if the, if the person was registered here for a PhD and then wanted to come to Trieste to do some work, that, that would be fine. So, that in, so what Vittorio is saying is that it wouldn't fit into the, they, they wouldn't apply to us for a PhD, they would be registered here for PhD and doing a lot of work here, but then part of that could also then be done in Trieste and we're very open to that sort of. Hopefully we'll be able to, to implement this program here. Yeah. Just one other thing to, to remember about the deadlines for the applications for the, uh, for the meetings. It's, it's the end of February next year, and that's to hold a meeting in 2021. Yep. So it's, it's, it's applying next year for the following year. So it, it, it's, it gives you plenty of time to then actually get the mechanics of it through before the meeting actually takes place. Yeah, and usually you need to provide already a a tentative date for so a tentative date for 2021 when you want to I mean part of the application is you you, you provide a date that, that that in 2021 in where when you will want to organize your meeting or course or workshop you know and it can be it can be uh, maybe two or three PIs it doesn't have to be one organizer it can be two or three Jordanian PIs that co-organize the event Okay. That's also okay, you know. Uh, in fact, you know, meetings usually the organizing scientific organizing committee is usually a, you know, a set of people, four or five people. So that, that that's also fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank right, you very thank much. Thank you so much thank for you. the talk. Uh, so if you look at the back of your badges, there is half an hour break. Afterwards, we're going to talk about the science of ICGB research activities. They're also going to talk about uh, research grant applications. How can you apply for a research grant? And towards the end of the session, there's going to be uh, one hour with uh, uh, younger scientists and students who wish to pursue their graduate studies. Uh, so let's have a break now and come back after half an hour at 1 p.m. You can pick your badge uh, from the front desk if you haven't done so.